Hey guys, welcome to Mac Time. So in this video, we are going to discuss about CSOM, that is Chronic Suppurative Otitis Media. So what is CSOM? It is a long-standing infection. It might include a part or, or a whole of the middle ear. And uh, this CSOM is characterized by ear discharge along with the permanent perforation. Okay. So when does the per uh, perforation become permanent? Uh, the perforation becomes permanent when the edges are covered by the squamous epithelium and it uh, does not heal spontaneously. Okay. What is CSOM? It's a long standing infection of a part or whole of the middle ear okay and it is characterized by ear discharge along with permanent perforation permanent perforation okay so what you need to remember is the first thing is a long standing infection that's why they call it the chronic it might include a part or whole of the middle ear it is characterized by ear discharge as well as a permanent perforation so when does a perforation become permanent when the edges are covered by squamous epithelium it is are covered by squamous epithelium and it does not heal spontaneously so this is when a perforation becomes permanent now we'll look at types of csom types of csom that is chronic suppurative otitis media so what are the different types of csom we do know number one thing is called as the tubo tympanic tubo tympanic the second one is called as the atico antral tubo tympanic and the atico antral so when you look at the, the borders of a tympanic membrane so suppose this is the tympanic membrane and you look at the different two lines passing through the umbo this one's the superior inferior posterior and the anterior okay so again i'm going to draw the tympanic membrane the line passing through the umbo the superior inferior anterior and posterior okay so in the tubo tympanic time it most commonly affects antero inferior part this part this part is affected in the atico antral it affects posterior superior part this part that is the attic so perforation is seen here in the attic antral the perforation seen in this part that is the attic part okay tubo tympanic is also called a safe type you can call it a safe type or benign whereas attic antral is called as unsafe or dangerous type okay so this uh, tubo tympanic usually involves the eustachian tube along with the meso tympanum here the atico antral is also associated with the bone eroding process bone eroding process which there might be a cholesteatoma granulations okay or there might be a presence of osteitis okay so this is about the tubo tympanic and atico antral type of csr firstly we will begin with the tubo tympanic type we will look at the etiology pathology and clinical features tubo tympanic type okay so what about tubo tympanic type of the mm, csm first looking at the etiology what are the causes of this okay the number one cause is it might be a sequelae of acute otitis media following acute otitis media this may progress to become csom upon a given period of time leaving behind a central perforation so permanent central perforation 
okay this can be one etiology the second etiology can be an ascending infection whether either through the eustachian tube or the infection may also spread from the tonsils the adenoids or it might be due to the infected sinuses as well so we can call it as an ascending infection ascending infection through what number one is the et tube eustachian tube the infection might come from the infected sinuses okay it might also come from the tonsils or the adenoids so these are all infections from the nasopharynx it might ascend it to the middle ear and cause the csom okay the third etiology can be due to allergy due to allergy to any ingestions like milk eggs fish so in this condition there will be a persistent mucoid otorrhea sometimes you find persistent mucoid otorrhea so this is about the etiology part of the tubo tympanic type of CSOM. Okay, what can it be? It can be a sequel of acute otitis, otitis media uh, causing a permanent central perforation or it can be due to an ascending infection from the station to infected sinuses, tonsils or adenoids or it might be due to allergy. So what actually happens in the tubo tympanic type of CSOM? We look at the pathology, what are the conditions that the patient suffers from. Let's look at it. Number one is perforation. Perforation of past tensa okay we'll have a perforation of the past tensa this might be a central perforation because it's not adequantral where you see attic perforation in this condition it is a central perforation so what happens to the middle ear mucosa look at it what happens to the middle ear mucosa during a tubo tympanic type of csom sometimes the mucosa appears normal sometimes it get it can get inflamed or edematous you can call it you can get inflamed or edematous and this appears as in velvety appearance velvety appearance of the mucosa then what else it can occur sometimes this inflamed mucosa can present itself as a polyp okay so what is a polyp polyp is nothing but as a smooth mass smooth mass of edematous and inflamed mucosa inflamed mucosa so this is a polyp sometimes this edematous and inflamed mucosa of the middle ear may present through the central perforation as a polyp into the external auditory canal and it appears generally pink fleshy pink fleshy polyp okay and what happens to the ossicular chain that is the malleus incus and stapes so generally in the tubo tympanic time they are intact and mobile so nothing actually happens because the bone eroding process is seen in the atequantral type so in the ossicular chain are left intact in the tubo tympanic type then we also find something called as tympanosclerosis tympanosclerosis what do we find here we find that there is hyalinization hyalinization along with calcification we find hyalinization and along with that calcification of the subepithelial connective tissue it might be on the promontory the ossicles the joints tendons okay on the over and the round windows so anywhere this can be so this this can also lead to tympanic sclerosis that's hyalinization and calcification of the subepithelial connective tissue sometimes it's also associated with fibrosis fibrosis or adhesions of the ossicular chain into the promontory or it might even block the eustachian tube ut tube block so this can all it can lead to so what about the pathology what happens so there's a perforation of the past tense of the tympanic membrane leading to a central perforation and the, what happens to the middle ear mucosa it sometimes it's normal and when it is uh, inflamed it can become edematous and velvety in appearance and this inflamed mucosa may present itself as a polyp through the central perforation into the external auditory canal ossicular chain is generally intact and mobile in this case so there might be a case of tympanic sclerosis where there's hyalinization and calcification of the promontory uh, ossicles joints tendons near the oval and the round window we can also see some of the fibrosis and additions and sometimes ett block can also be there okay so this is about the pathology in the tubo tympanic type now let's look at the bacteriology okay bacteriology what are all the bacteria that can cause this type of csom so number one thing we have is the of course the most common we have is the staphylococcus 
Staphylococcus aureus and it can also be due to Pseudomonas Pseudomonas aeruginosa it can be due to Proteus E. coli and sometimes due to Streptococci as well so these are all the bacteriology and no, which cause the conditions of the CSOM okay now we look at the types of perforation types of perforation what are different perforations that we can see okay if you look at it this is the tympanic membrane and okay first we'll draw all the tympanic membranes and then we'll directly classify it okay so if you consider this as a tympanic membrane sorry diagram is not so good okay what happens there is a perforation here this is called as a central perforation central perforation anterior okay what happens the perforation is like this this is also a central perforation because it's not involved in the attic part it's also a central perforation but here it is medium sized okay what happens the perforation is like this oh it's involving a lot of part of tympanic membrane so in this condition it's called as a subtotal because it's nearing total subtotal perforation okay and what happens if there is perforation throughout this entire part of the past tensor is completely gone so that will be a total perforation okay that be total perforation and sometimes there might be a destruction of the fibrous annulus as well okay then what if there is a perforation here here it is called as attic attic under attic perforation attic perforation and sometimes the perforation might also involve this part okay and here it is again posterior superior along with marginal perforation so these are all types of perforations that you can see on the tympanic membrane we have a central perforation followed by the again central perforation which is medium sized followed by subtotal perforation total perforation attic perforation along with that posterior superior and marginal perforation so there are all different types of perforations that we can see in the csw now moving on to the clinical features okay very important what are the clinical features that the patient presents with if he is having the csom now looking at it the first thing that you should know is ear discharge okay ear discharge so what happens in ear discharge in the tubo tympanic type the ear discharge is non offensive that is the smell is not offending okay it generally is mucoid sometimes it can also be mucopurulent as well okay and here the discharge can be constant can be constant but sometimes it's also intermittent patient might tell that it comes and goes it comes and goes or it may be constant throughout it is non offensive that is no foul smell is coming it can be mucoid or it can be mucopurulent as well sometimes the discharge appears at the time of upper respiratory tract infection and also during the accidental entry of water into the air so the discharge can happen in all these conditions moving on to the second symptom that is the hearing loss okay hearing loss so how is the hearing loss in this condition it is mostly conductive type so conductive type hearing loss the patient experiences in the case of csom and generally it does not exceed 50 decibels of sound sometimes the patient hears better in the presence of a discharge okay uh, better than the when the ear is dry so what do they call it they call it as round window shielding effect whenever there is a perfor whenever there is a ear discharge the person hears better but when the discharge is gone the ear is dry the person hearing loss worsens this is because of round window shielding effect by the discharge and it causes a phase differential of the two windows leading to a better sound production then uh, how will be the perforation in this condition looking at the perforation in the tubo tympanic type here it's always central that's why they call it tubo tympanic 
it's always central it might be in the anterior posterior or inferior to the handle of malleus sometimes it might even include the annular side leading to a subcortical perforation but it's still a central perforation okay and what happens to the middle ear mucosa as i just told you sometimes it's normal sometimes when it gets inflamed it might look it matters it matters red swollen pale pink you can say okay so this is all the affections of the middle ear mucosa in the tube or tympanic type of uh, CSM okay so this is all the clinical features now moving on to the assessment how do you assess or what are the tests you do to determine the person is having CSM so assessment so what assessment you do well, the first thing is you have to look for examination under the microscope examination of the ear under the microscope okay then also order for an audiogram to detect the type and degree of hearing loss that is pure on audiometry and also collect the discharge and put it out for culture and sensitivity to determine the type of bacteria present and you can also order for a mustard x-ray to check whether it is also getting improved because it can be a complication of CSOM as well as order for a CT scan of the temporal bone to detect if there is any bone eroding process okay so these are all the assessment or examinations that you can do then following what treatment you would advise to the patient let's look at the treatment part okay in the treatment part what do we have first thing is the oral toilet okay what is oral toilet here you are clearing all the discharge okay you are removing all the discharge all discharge cleared out you are making the ear clean and dry then following dry you are going to administer ear drops generally uh, general antibiotics to reduce the infection then uh, you should also give along with ear drops you should give a systemic antibiotics and what else you can do you can also you know there is a surgical treatment as well surgical treatment and this includes myringoplasty or along with that it can also include osculoplasty which is totally called as tympanoplasty okay we can go for tympanoplasty that is a reconstructive surgery so this is about the tubo tympanic type of the csom okay different types of perforations bacteriology pathology etiology everything you do about the csom now we are going to discuss about the atico antral type of csom okay so what's the next heading we have Atico antral that is the B Atico antral type of CSOM. Now, this is a dangerous type or unsafe type of CSOM that you can call it. And uh, where is the perforation in the Atico antral? It's in the posterior superior part. Posterior superior part, there is perforation. Suppose this is the middle ear mucosa. The perforation is in this area sometimes it might also include above okay and what is the etiology the etiology is again the same as the tubo tympanic time it can be due to acute otitis media sequelae or it can be due to ascending infection as well as allergy etiology is the same the pathology we are going to look at it pathology a little bit different the first thing is looking at pathology of the antiphoenteral type what we have the first thing is cholesteatoma we are going to look at a separate heading okay what is cholesteatoma what are the different causes and how do you treat cholesteatoma we are going to look at it so just remember that the cholesteatoma is also responsible okay pathology cholesteatoma can happen then it can also have osteitis along with granulation tissue granulation tissue here the osteitis mostly involves the outer attic wall okay uh, the posterior superior margin of the tympanic uh, ring then sometimes you can also see a fleshy red polypus okay filling the meters so this is also seen then what else can occur here the most important thing is ossicular necrosis because of the bone eroding process sometimes 
There occurs necrosis of the ossicular chain that is the malleus, incus and stapes. Both are eroded. Okay. Sometimes it can also occur cholesteatoma. Chole, sorry, not cholesteatoma. Cholesterol granuloma. This can also happen in the pathology. Then what about the bacteriology? Bacteriology is again same as the tubotin there is no something different look at symptomatology or uh, symptoms clinical features what you call it look at it the first thing is the patient again has ear discharge but how is the discharge different from the tuber panic? here the discharge is not so much it's generally scanty but even though it is scanty it is very very foul smelling where there is foul smelling discharge due to bone destruction due to bone destruction the smell is very false smelly then what about the hearing loss hearing loss in the patient here normally the hearing is normal because the past tensa is normal hearing is normal and along with that if the ossicular chain is intact then it is okay but when there is there is cholesteatoma the we can call the patient as cholesteatoma here because it bridges the gap caused by the destroyed ossicles Sometimes you can also see bleeding. Okay, bleeding is also seen due to the breakage of granulations. Okay, so these are all the clinical features. Then, what are the different signs that we can observe? If you look at the signs, number one thing is the perforation. So, where do you see the perforation here? Here you are seeing perforation in the attic part. Okay, attic or posterior superior part. Then we do have the retraction pockets very important what is retraction pocket this retraction pocket is nothing but as invagination invagination of tympanic membrane seen so these are for various stages number one two three and four in the first stage the tympanic membrane is retracted but it does not touch the incus so does not touch incus what happens in stage 2? In stage 2, the tympanic membrane is retracted very deep. It touches the incus. Touches the incus. In stage 3, there is a middle ear atelectasis. That is, middle ear is collapsed. The tympanic membrane lies on the promontory. Tympanic membrane lies on promontory. Along the medial wall of the middle ear. Then in the stage 4, it is called as adhesive adhesive otitis media because the tympanic membrane is adjacent to the medial wall okay so this can also occur then what are the different the third thing we can also see cholesteatoma in this patient now followingly let's look at the assessment how do you assess or examine the patient with this type of perforation again this examination remains the same with the examination under the microscope tuning for tests radiogram x-ray most at ct scan of temporal probe then again you have to check for culture and sensitivity of ear discharge as well so what are the features that indicate uh, complications in the cosm okay assessment is same as tubotin panic looking at uh, what you call it the features features indicating complications in CSOM so what are the features that indicate complications in CSOM number one thing is we have pain the pain the patient suffers from pain he might have an episodes of vertigo there might be a persistent headache okay persistent headache is present sometimes there might be a facial weakness due to damage to the facial nerve in the middle ear they might also suffer from fever nausea vomiting or the patient might have irritability neck rigidity which indicates meningitis the patient also suffer from ataxia or there may be abscess around the ear so these are all the features that indicate complications in CSO. What about the treatment part? Treatment part of this aticoantral, it is mainly surgical. 
here we have two important things that is canal wall up procedures and canal wall down procedures in the canal wall down procedures we are leaving the mastoid cavity open into the external auditory canal so the mastoid is open into external auditory canal in the color in the canal wall up procedure here what we are doing here we are removing the disease with a combined approach through the meatus and the mastoid here we are retaining the posterior bony meatal wall intact okay we are not we are avoiding an open mustard cavity we are avoiding an open mustard cavity here canal wall so you should know about the uh, little bit about canal wall down procedure here there is a widely open meatus which is communicating with the mustard here the patient has to depend on doctor for because of cleaning the mustard cavity once or twice a year because of it might get infected as well the recurrence is very low in this case and generally uh, the second look for the surgery is not required here but since the canal wall is open into the mustard cavity we should advise the patient th that he should not swim okay swimming is contraindicated and uh, if there are any problems uh, sometimes if the patient requires a hearing aid there might be a problem because of the open canal wall what happens in the canal wall up procedure here the meatus appears normal because we are not okay leaving it open to the mustard cavity here it does not require routine cleaning as in the canal wall down procedure then there is a high rate of recurrent or residual cholesteatoma in the canal wall up procedure so there is a second look for the surgery is required in this case okay so there are no limitations the patient can can be allowed to swimming in this case and if he requires a hearing aid it will be better and easy to so that's about the surgical treatment then we can also do reconstructive surgery along with the conservative treatment as well so thank you guys thank you for watching video till the end make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and share it to your friends i hope i'll see you in the next again bye